Hello to my NCBA colleagues. I find it quite interesting. I'm going to talk a little bit about climate, how it's warming, and I'm not able to get to you because of an ice storm. Uh, I find that quite, quite interesting, and uh, I uh, really apologize. Every option to get to Houston was canceled. So listen, today I want to provoke a little thought on something we've been talking about for more than 10 years at this conference, the environment, sustainability. And I'll start with something that happened to me last week at my dinner table. Uncle Jeff and, and my wife, the aunt, hosted some of our nieces and nephews with our kids. We're having a dinner and Uncle Jeff was cooking steaks. And one of my nieces that is involved in horses and has grown up in an agricultural environment shared with me that, no, 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 she doesn't eat beef and just decided not to. And she went on to say she doesn't, when I asked her why, it was, well, because of the impact that cattle have on the environment. Now, by the end of the dinner, she didn't eat the steak, but give me, give me a couple months on that. But I think it's happened to all of us. It's gotten personal. And my challenge to all of us is, I believe cattle industry 2030, this is the decade of greatest opportunity. It might be the decade with the highest stakes in the game that we've ever played. But there is no question in my mind that it ends in a very positive way. And let me just try to provoke a little thought in that way. So a quote I wrote on the mirror when the pandemic hit my family, and uh, I say it in the company a lot is, hey, it's not what happens to you that matters. It's how you respond. So what's happening to us? And I think you all could make a chart like this next slide. Here's from October to the dinner table that I just talked about. Uh, over, over the time. So in October, I find out the United Nations is having a meeting to talk about how we're going to feed the world and cool the climate by 2030. And three solutions, and one of those solutions was the just removal of livestock. Absolutely disconnected, unacceptable outcome. What do we do? We rally before the summit and get over 50% of the global animal industry, salmon, pigs, chickens, cattle, we get the United Nations on that Zoom call, and whoa, we're slowing things down, and we've mitigated some of that action. The other is COP26 in Glasgow, biggest environmental meeting, uh, happened in November. What rose is one of the top kind of golden keys, somebody said, solution, was methane reduction. Greenhouse gas, carbon methane, carbon stock gas takes too long. It's about methane, and methane reduction is how we do this. That's an opportunity for us. And then, you know, flipping through on an airplane last week, you know, on Instagram, here comes The Economist. And uh, in that, it's, it's talking about, and the headline that caught me is, you know, by cooking burgers, the cattle industry is cooking the world. You know, they're, they're, playing, they're claiming 40, 50 percent of the emissions is us when we're three, four, five percent. Absolutely disconnected. And then a recent consumer study that we've done, and you've all done them as well, that we did in Elanco, shocked me to show that the people that are backing away, engaged consumers that are starting to be hesitant or back away from beef, it was more about the impact on the environment than the nutrition or maybe how you know, they consume it and how they feel about consuming it. It shocked me. And then of course, what happened with my niece at the dinner table. Listen, I think we can all agree, climate is colliding with cattle and it is our opportunity to grab the wheel and control this narrative. Because I believe this next slide, and we all can create our own list, I'm not the expert, there's a lot in the room, that there's facts and forces that are truly tailwinds for us, opportunities. First, and it hit me with the United Nations debate that I was in with the United Nations lady is, you cannot disconnect calories and climate. You gotta feed this world, and the world wants protein, and they want beef. <laughs> and, and then you can cool the climate with methane reduction. Not just carbon, it can be done but don't disconnect them, because that, that's unrealistic, especially in the next eight years. Second is protein, everybody. We got a couple consumer product people on our, on, our, on our board, and just look at the data. Protein is the hottest food segment right now in food, globally and in the United States. It grew 20% last year, 11% in volume. And we know why. You know, the Western diets, people want more protein and less carbs. Globally, it's growing. The third force is global beef demand is on the rise. Exports are breaking records. One of my factors I see is happening is we had a big pig business in China. African swine fever, when that hit, 
people had to look to other proteins. China and other countries in Asia discovered that what we all know is the great taste of beef. And that's changed trends that are gonna last for a long time and good for our industry. You can't stop the power of taste, cost, and nutrition. And beef wins in all three of those. And changing diets won't cool the climate. I think everyone knows that. You're definitely not gonna eat your way out of this or changing diets, especially in eight years. You're gonna do it with methane reduction. And companies have already made commitments that they're gonna do something on this climate. And the commitments have been made. The challenge is the action plans behind them. So my, my challenging, provoking idea, big idea here is the cattle industry, the US cattle industry is in the center. We hold calories and protein demand and methane reduction more than any other industry. And if we remember three numbers that are real, that are absolute, that create this opportunity, it would be first 60. 60% 60 of the world's getting the wrong nutrition. One third, Africa, India, they're not getting enough calories, definitely not enough protein calories. Then there's a third of the Western world and other places that are getting the wrong calories. Not just hidden hunger, but obesity and nutrition is changing and diets are changing and animal protein is increasing in those diets from keto to whole 30 and on. The second is eight years. It's really hit me. This number is, is I've traveled around the world, been involved in this environmental movement because I believe it is the next frontier of innovation for us. Eight years is everyone's setting from the United Nations to Glasgow and COP26 to our administration in Washington. Everyone's saying this trajectory has to change by 2030. The only way to do that is methane. And the third is there's economic opportunity. Let's look to the dairy industry, other industries. If we do this right with methane credits and do this you know, holistically and growing demand, not shrinking demand, there's 25% economic opportunity in this decade. 68, 25. Different than, I've been involved in antibiotics in 30 years and animal well-being, all of you have, all of our issues, if you track them over the last 30 years, this one's a little different. And one of them is this slide. It's not just Main Street and global demand and meat. No, it's Wall Street. We've moved from corporate social responsibility to ESG, environmental, social, and governance. Big investors want this change. Uh, this is Larry Fink in his annual letter, BlackRock, a top five investor in Elanco and a top five investor in a lot of companies in our industry. And see what he says. Every company in every industry will be transformed by the transition to net zero. You will be a leader or you will be led. This is gonna happen. We get asked often, hey, tell us about your cattle business and the environmental impact. Our new message is it's, it's a great opportunity and we're leaning in. Here's another factor that I think we all agree is, I've talked to a lot of people and all of you, uh, a, lot, a lot of people in that room as well, is look, we've made our commitments. Most all major companies and a lot of you have made the commitment that we'll be net zero, greenhouse gas free by 2030, 2040. But what the gaps are and where I think this conference needs to pivot to action is really in these three areas. One is in the area of just where are we? How much greenhouse gas, where is my footprint? What are the factors driving the footprint? The second is, what's the action plan, the 2030 action plan that can get me to this destination? And with that, I can drive value. How can I get value? And that people tell me even this week is, hey, we gotta get value by keeping beef demand growing. We gotta keep our brand and our image up. And third is, how do we get economic value from the methane credits all the way down to the producer? These are the three gaps. So as we step back and think action plan, as I close here, I would say we all know there's four streams. This is a very simplistic chart. There's a lot of experts in the room and I apologize, but hey, how do we bring methane down? On the land, in the animal, out of the animal, and in the value chain. And each one of us has different plays and are even starting to put action plans or acting on different areas. We're focused, as you can imagine, heavily on in the animal and out of the animal. But where, where each one of us plays here is gonna be critical to drive this change. So in a spirit of closing of accountability, Elanco is leaning in here. We, we are ready to move to action in a proactive way to come alongside of you to help on this journey to 2030, to make this a decade of great opportunity. And the stakes are high. So we're adjusting resources, 
our pipeline and leaning in. And let me just share in the spirit of that four ways we believe we can come alongside and help with your action plans. First is our, our portfolio, our pipeline and our partners. Right now in the beef industry, we're 10 to 12% reduction of footprint with our portfolio. How do we grow that? How do we change our claims even, even and look at our claims from productivity to the environment? How do we bring partners that are already doing work here to help reach the global cattle? Second is analytics. Started in 2007 with the benchmark database. We built Elanco Knowledge Solutions. At this conference, behind Dr. Sarah Place's leadership, we have launched Uplook. Uplook will be a tool that we can bring onto the feed yards that can actually look at uh, what your footprint is and benchmark where you are so that then you can move forward. And that tool is going to be piloted and introduced to the industry as we speak. The other is value creation. How do we get value out of this? So we are spinning out and announced this week a company called Athean, where it's going to be an independent company. We funded to start it and spin it out. And they will do three things. They will come on to operations and value chains and actually look at aggregating the data, certifying the data, and then allowing you to monetize your footprint reduction. And then lastly is working with the U.S. cattle industry, the global animal industries, with some of the better PR firms to actually start to drive the change of this narrative. Animals can cool the climate and feed the world. Cattle can be absolutely critical and doing some of the most mission critical work we've ever done as an industry. The world wants what we produce and we can give the environment what it needs by playing an active role in that. I believe that. And so as we close, I think we all know, hey, we've got to stop talking, start acting. Most of you have. We as a company are now doing that in a big way. Understand this issue, benchmark where we are, put an action place, and then start telling the story. Globally, all the way back to my niece, personally. This will be, I believe, the greatest decade of opportunity for animal agriculture and especially the U.S. cattle industry. Thank you.